in the case of my lab, we're really interested in studying disease and modeling disease and finding therapeutics. So we need two things for our studies. We need lots of cells, and in, in our case, lots of neurons, um, and also a very consistent method of producing the neurons because ultimately consistency is the key to what we do. It turns out that you can grow cells in three dimensions at extraordinarily high density so that you can actually make a lot of cells economically. And for labs like mine, which need to make billions and billions of neurons, um, it's very nice to have a method um, that's relatively um, effective um, in both time and also in cost. Um, so we can make a billion cells in one flask, which would normally take us many, many, many tissue culture plates to, to generate. So we call our um, three-dimensional structures spheroids um, as opposed to organoids, just to reflect on the observation that they tend to be simpler, although they're grown in three dimensions. So uh, one of the big challenges we, we, we face in using a new technology um, a technology that we believe is going to result in the discovery of more effective, more personalized therapeutics is convincing uh, uh, others, for instance others in the pharmaceutical industry, that this is a viable approach um, and that they should be working with us to see whether or not this system is better than the systems that they currently use. I think that um, it's, it's risky in that it's new, but I think it's really important that uh, people outside of academia really pay attention to these kinds of systems because it's not guaranteed that they will improve the uh, um, um, disease study and drug discovery process, but it, it, is, it is reasonable to think that they might help and in, in move things in that direction. And I think one hurdle we face is really in trying to convince companies to kind of invest um, in helping us perfect this technology for the purpose of discovering better drugs.